Good morning, and uh, thank you. There are a lot of very familiar faces, colleagues, friends, and media, many of you I've talked to, and our team and the family uh, from home. So great to have you all here. So back in 2002, I did the first ever robotic case in the country at Escort Heart Institute. And you see Dr. Trehan there, and then President Abdul Kalamji, who was in the room uh, during the inauguration, and he watched uh, the robotic surgery. And being a scientist, he was quite intrigued that where and how we could do some of these procedures truly in a teleoperation situation. So when we look at the global robotic scene and what really prompted me to start looking as to different ways uh, to advance this robotic, a wonderful technique and technology that can help patients really uh, reduce their morbidity and get back to their functional life status. So today we have roughly over 8,000 robotic systems, and most of the penetration, almost 90%, remains uh, in developed economies, United States, Europe, and Japan. And that means almost uh, 7 billion people globally do not have easy access, and the biggest reason is cost and a steep learning curve that has been associated with robotics. And it's a shame that in India, when we talk of the 70,000 hospitals with a population of 1.4 billion, we do have only roughly around 230 or so robotic systems. And that means there is a much, much urgent need to change this. There's no reason that the patients uh, in many countries, including India, should not have access. And that is really what has been the driving force. And uh, also, when you look at uh, robotic systems in relation to the global comparison, we have 0.07 per million in the country. Uh, and it is very unattractive to a lot of hospitals because of the high cost. And also training programs are not really well organized. And there are some diehard surgeons who are really trying to teach a lot of people. But it's a very small number considering the need that is in the country. So we've got to change. So with this, we created SS Innovations with the idea to come up with a technologically advanced system that hopefully will surpass many other robotic technologies and finally be affordable to benefit most patients in the world. You know, I say that technology, if expensive, it is not going to benefit most. And it is only through technology that we can actually change the direction of healthcare for so many people. Uh, and our mission is to really make it gold standard and affordable for all. A very quick uh, catch up on our journey it started in uh, 21 with our Mantra 2 development and uh, we did our first trial with Dr. Rawal and uh, he's been our literally a champion for the evolution of SS innovations and the Mantra system. We did the trial and uh, we did have also uh, certification in India, ISO 13485, which is a standard required internationally for medical devices and our local Indian CDSO regulatory approval. And our first commercial launch was in July. Again, Dr. Rawal likes to get the things first. And so it was his hospital that uh, the system was launched. And since then, I think roughly over 20 systems were launched uh, in different stages uh, in uh, 23. And uh, this year, we have moved very rapidly. Within the first five months or so, we have sold uh, almost 28 systems. And uh, in May, we did our first animal telesurgery trial sitting in our office. And there were quite a few surgeons, and some of them are here in the, in the group here today. And we were able to operate in an animal model five kilometers away at World Laparoscopy Hospital. So that was the first trial that we did. We did uh, two uh, big models that time, and very successfully. One of the biggest issues with telesurgery is always a concern is there going to be a delay in transmission? And to our surprise, there was almost imperceptible delay. In fact, the surgeons who were there in the room that time, they made a comment that it's just like you're operating in the same room. And since then, uh, we uh, did, in fact, our first human uh, live telesurgery uh, just about a week ago. The gallbladder was taken out. 
And um, so now we are on to mantra three. And as Visha pointed out, uh, that literally in five months, the next generation, and in my opinion, as a robotic surgeon, not as a assist innovation leader, is the best robotic system today globally with all these very advanced features that currently nobody has, and also tremendous uh, enabling technologies that we have developed, and also features that currently, again, no other company has, also multi-specialty spectrum, including heart surgery. So our goal is to do clinical trial, again, with uh, Dr. Rabal uh, starting out with the Mantra uh, 3 system, and do a commercial launch at some point next month. US FDA, European C approval, they're all in the process, and we do have regulatory approvals in quite a few countries. Uh, our facility in Gurgaon, uh, I must say we are very proud of uh, what has been achieved. And literally, it's an absolute teamwork, and someone asked me, what is your greatest asset? And I said, our team. And very proud young engineers, and they're so dedicated. <laughs> now, I'm going to get into the technology. So many of you are familiar with our Mantra 2 system, uh, and it is functional. So there is no issue at all with the Mantra 2 system. Goal was to get to the next level, because I think science must continue to evolve. I think it doesn't matter what area of science or technology we look at, it is constantly changing. And we must remain uh, very focused on improving on things, otherwise the status quo is no good. So now we have Mantra 3, and this system is quite different, very advanced than Mantra 2 today. So very slim, sleeker robotic arms that are modular, and the best part is it allows using three, four, or five arms, and as you can see on this stage here, the five-arm system that is docked into this mannequin. And uh, basically, there's no collision because of the slim design, and one can use up to five arms to do some of these complex operation or use enabling technologies that otherwise you have to constantly switch. And uh, it's a smaller footprint. I used to joke with my team, we need to get rid of this large surgeon command center. And there was a lot of debate. And so what we have done, as you see, is a chair now compared to the previous version. And I have asked our team to make one for my bedroom. And I can operate from sitting there. And it will be possible at some point that we can do. So it is very uh, actually uh, uh, slim design and very comfortable ergonomically. Uh, the glasses are uh, augmented reality and uh, mixed reality glasses with beautiful resolution. And we get rid of a large monitor. Of course, it will be available if somebody wants it. And the foot pedals are on a tray that goes inside. All electronics and uh, computers are literally inside of this chair. And so it is currently the most advanced surgeon command center using also magnetic sensor devices, so you don't have to hold uh, some of these sometimes cumbersome uh, controls. And it, you have a free hand and a tremendous reach. And uh, also built-in 2D monitor for all kinds of things that are required in relation to the controls or pulling up the images. Our, our Maya division has created whereby we can literally take a CT or an MRI and convert into a 3D model. It has a built-in teleproctoring capabilities. The vision card, again, is slimmer. Beautiful 4K, 32-inch 3D monitor for the entire surgical team. And built-in recording playback capabilities, uh, all integrated into this slim design. And also built-in teleproctoring and telesurgery capabilities are all there today. We are partnered currently with Olympus. It's an articulating camera, and it has got wonderful resolution. Uh, over 40 plus all different types of instruments for multi-specialty. And on top of that, we have focused also on reviving the robotic cardiac surgery. And unfortunately, although the original robot uh, was built for heart, but the saying goes it started at heart and landed on prostate. 
And with heart surgery, patients end up having their sternum split. And in my own personal experience, uh, I, we used to do surgery through literally tiny finger strips and holes, and the patients, you know, 20% went home next day. So it's a wonderful way of doing complex cardiac operations today. And the goal was to really revive because, unfortunately, because of the uh, lack of support of enabling technologies, people gave up because of the, the nature of the specialty. But we have developed uh, some enabling technologies which will absolutely revolutionize how bypass surgery is done in future. With push of a button, two arteries get joined in six seconds, literally. Our Maya division uh, is absolutely phenomenal. And we have a team of very bright people that uh, are working on uh, augmented uh, mixed reality, virtual reality, and XR. And also we have developed teleproctoring. In fact, I have done two uh, teleproctoring cases, one in Bangalore, sitting in, in fact in a hotel during our last conference, and another from our office to Ahmedabad. So this will be a huge, actually, advance in terms of launching programs, helping surgeons don't have to travel. And I think it will be more efficient and predictable. and uh, Sometimes it is not easy to just keep going wherever. Uh, uh, this is what we did, uh, two teleproctoring uh, cases, literally sitting in my office. And uh, I could eat lunch while talking to them. And one was uh, in Ahmedabad, almost 1,000 kilometers. And uh, in Bangalore, which is over 2,000 kilometers, uh, both were cardiac cases. Now, in terms of where we are today, uh, we have, at this point, around 50 systems that we have sold. Uh, over 35 absolutely flawless live demonstrations have been done in various conferences, uh, national conferences that uh, have occurred. Uh, more than roughly 1,400 all different types of surgeries have been done. Almost 70 different types of procedures have been done from mouth down to pelvis and everything in between. And uh, uh, 300 plus surgeons now have been trained across the country, and there is staff also. So when you look at what has been done, majority of the patients ultimately do fall in urology because of just the nature of uh, uh, presentation of pathology. But I think general surgery has been very rapidly advancing. Uh, we have done 103 cardiac cases, and I think as Dr. Bisha pointed out, uh, we are grateful to Dr. Nitin Rajput, who has done most number of cardiac cases at Narayan Hridale. Very proud to share, we have zero mortality, no device-related injury caused due to the device, there is no device-related complication, and as you can see, majority of the procedures today are multi-specialty. And we are gradually launching cardiac programs. And currently, we have done over 100 uh, cardiac surgeries with our system. Where are we heading to the future? Uh, we have held single arm applications for tele-diagnosis and teletherapy. And this is really the goal has always been decentralize and democratize access and excellence. And I think we are going to achieve that. And final thing would be, of course, telesurgery. And uh, this is how we have performed. Uh, we are partnered with Airtel. And uh, the first one that was done at uh, World Laparoscopy Hospital, it was done through uh, uh, RF uh, transmission. And even then, hardly any latency. And uh, this procedure was called better. Uh, just over an hour. There were no transmission issues, system issues, no complication, no perceptible latency. And uh, this is a, a little video of uh, the surgery. And as you can see, the system is at World Laparoscopy Hospital. Dr. Mishra is sitting in our office in Gurgaon, five kilometers away. And, uh, and uh, I must say it was really remarkable because the whole telesurgery concept existed back in the 80s when NASA and Defense Department of United States funded the research to be able to operate in long distance in space or in battlefield. Now, with the technology capabilities as well as available high-speed connectivity, it's all real. And this is really what's going to change as we move forward. 
in bringing their care to people instead of patients having to travel. And this is actually a universal problem of access. And, uh, and you can see the gallbladder is being taken out. So with that, I will stop here. And thank you all very much, and Jai Hind.